Well, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good ever, whatever time of day you are watching this. Thank you for doing so. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Hope that food comb was wearing off because uh, we about to dig a little bit. It's the next installment of Friday Features, the functional masculinity portion. So, uh, just a brief recap. A couple weeks ago, we did the functional masculinity piece on providing security. And that was real deep in that understanding that part of the leadership aspect of functional masculinity is being able to conscientiously snuff out insecurity, but do so in a skillful manner that the people in your world still have the freedom to do what they're going to do. But understand that you can be relied upon when it go down and they need somebody to lean on. Well, this week we're going to talk about the top thing that, yeah, pretty much the top thing that men need to be relied upon to do often. And this one going to be a little touchy, but bear with me for the full extent of the explanation and the walkthrough and everything. And the second thing that we talked about uh, just based on the, the introduction is all functional masculinity must have the capacity to make tough decisions. Let me say it again. All functional masculinity must have the capacity to make tough decisions. It must, it must also be prepared to make tough decisions at any given time. Now, don't get it flipped. If you and if you're a man, you got a wife, girlfriend, whatever, and y'all got a, a, a general rapport about how y'all going to operate the glorified God, it's not that she can't make decisions that's asinine when i say a man can is supposed to be prepared to make tough decisions that don't mean he make all the decisions that's asinine no like i said the man the guy gave the man and the woman dominion and that dominion don't look the same because he created masculinity and femininity differently so sometimes a situation is going to come up where empowered femininity can make the decision. Empowered femininity can make the decision given the masculinity already establishing the security of the situation, given that everybody's in God's order already. Because remember, uh, a lot of men like to drop that submit to your wife, submit wife, submit to your husband's piece and ignore the whole husband's you know, love your wives as Christ loved the church peace. And they also want to ignore, submit you to one another out of reverence to the Lord. Submit you to one another means that sometimes uh, the, the, the woman is right. <laughs> run, run the biblical filter on it. So I guess the next question is, is that why is this necessary? Because... Oftentimes, and even in my own life, a man's masculinity is so underdeveloped that he cannot often, a lot of men often cannot be relied upon to make tough decisions. And a lot of times, men can't even be relied upon to make basic decisions. <sighs> you ever, men, you ever uh, had the opportunity to go out with your girl? And she asks you where you want to eat. A lot of times, this is kind of a low-key test to see if a man's going to make a distinct decision. A lot of times, that's the test to see if a man is going to make a distinct decision. Not necessarily if you're going to pick the right place. Now, don't get it flipped, man eventually you need to know what she want to eat and drop it in such a way like well i was thinking about so and so you want to go to so and so she said well if you want to go to so and so i said well let's go to so and so like that not not like we going to so and so because what because when a man conveys his decision making skills like that it tears up the security or at least compromises the security. And remember, men, we are supposed to stomp out insecurity, not create it. <laughs> so that's the piece on that one. 
So now that I got the little introduction out the way, let's go deeper into it and dig into some biblical principles. So kingdom driven decision making, I think, was like the first or second unit of uh, the, 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 the 360 series, the weekend encouragement it was like the first or second unit. So we're going to take that into a masculine context today in a functional masculinity context. So couple verses. Then I'm going to go to my big verse. Big, I mean, the one that everybody knows is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean, do not lean to your own understanding. and all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. That That's a that's an understanding decision-making verse for everybody. But in the context of functional masculinity, God will impart things of functional masculinity that's that's what a straight path in functional masculinity looks like. The five things that I talked about in the introduction. The stomping out insecurity, making tough decisions, don't take it personal, which we're going to talk about next time. Oh, I can't wait for that one. Take ownership always and snuffing out any alternative ideas that don't come from God. So them are the five things. That's the, the, the path straight. So. A man with his past straight in, in 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 the context of in the context of Christ likeness can make tough decisions, can make tough biblically driven decisions. And then another one that uh, probably just about as many of you know is First Corinthians ten th verse thirty one. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So that's a checkpoint. A man has to ask himself. Is this going to glorify God in the context of whatever relationship that I'm that I'm that I'm cultivating? So that's the principle on that one. That's the principle on that one. We'll do one more and we'll go to the big one. We'll do the, the big one. And this is one of my personal favorites. Philippians 4. Verse 8, finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there's any excellence, anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. I call this the whatever verse. Normally, whatever is a bad thing. When you say whatever, you know, you're being smart, you're being snarky and all kind of stuff like that. But whatever this time is. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is a good repute, you cross-reference this to the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 30, 20, 23. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, gentleness, self-control. Those are the kind of those are the kind of checkpoints that a man needs during his decision-making time. When it is when it comes to him to make a decision. Because if you in whoever you got your rapport because i mean this isn't just in a husband and wife boyfriend and girlfriend kind of context i mean you could be the man in your you could be a man in your workplace even if you're not the boss you should be relied upon to make tough decisions as it pertains to what your job is and whatever it is to make your workplace move forward so before we go into the big verse, three basic questions you got to ask yourself. What the scripture got to say about, the, about what, what, what's, what's on the table? How can I better understand what the scripture says about on the table? Make sure that scripture actually says it and it's not what you think scripture says about it. And then, then like I said, the big one from uh, 1 Corinthians 10. Glory of God. If God is not glorified by the decision, it cannot be made. Now, I ain't trying to condemn nobody because I fall on my face on that one all the time. That's what grace is for. That's what Romans 8, 1 is for. No condemnation. So if you make a bad decision, confess it. <laughs> Repent. Tighten back up. Some wise folks, some wise folks at a, a certain organization. I'm not going to mention them by name because I ain't trying to you know, put nobody out there like that. Always say, once you know better, do better. So you fall on your face, confess it, get your forgiveness, repent, and then get it in your mindset to get back to that restoration point, and you can do better on that one. Now, here come the big one. Because 
And, and let me preface this big verse with this, that Jesus walked that perfect walk in our place. But in the context of walking that perfect walk, he was the second Adam. His functional masculinity is the greatest functional example of functional masculinity we have ever seen. So when Adam's example failed, Jesus' example took over. Took over and not only redeemed us, but set the precedent that this is where the standard is set. So let's think about this here. I'm going to go to uh, Luke chapter 22, verses... 41 through 44. You want to talk about tough decision making? This is tough decision making right here. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. His sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Man, you ever been shook by a decision you had to make? I know I've been shook by some decisions I didn't had to make. Some, some decisions I had to make to do things. Some decisions I had to make to not do things. Did I get it right every time? No. But this is the pressure. That often falls on functional masculinity. Now, now ladies, I'm not hating on y'all. Being a woman is tough. Because for, for, for no other reason that so few men have functional masculinity that y'all got to interact with these dysfunctional men. So, again, try to help y'all out a little bit. Try to help y'all out a little bit. So, let's put this in, let's put this scripture in context. Jesus is about to go on the cross. He's about to go be crucified and go up on the cross. He has known this since eternity past. But since eternity passed, he has had uninterrupted fellowship on a level that nobody has ever had uninterrupted fellowship with the father before. And probably never will since uh, until, you know, the father's all and in all at the end of uh, Revelation of John. So. To be the ransom for all of our sins. Jesus has to break that fellowship, but despite the fact that he has known this since eternity past, the fact that the reality of the matter is upon him, it is causing him great grief because he does not want to be separated from his daddy. Jesus didn't do nothing wrong. Jesus didn't sin. Jesus, Jesus about to go take a whooping for, 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 for you, for me, for everybody, men and women. Could you imagine having to take the whooping for everybody? Stepping, standing in the gap for everybody? Men, good news. We only have to stand in the gap in the people in our five areas. In the context by which we're supposed to do it. it don't, it's not everybody. Jesus literally stood in the gap for everybody and took everybody whooping. That's pressure. And that's a tough decision. Matter of fact, let me say this: the decision to the decision in real time, while it was decided in eternity past, what Jesus was going to do, the real time decision when the reality was upon them that Jesus would humble himself to this level and go up on the cross and be the atoning sacrifice, the ransom for our sins, puts Jesus. At a level of functional masculinity decision making that I don't think any mortal man could ever reach. Think about it. Noah was selected by God to be that one family that had it right, per se, when he destroyed the earth with water. Well, I mean, after all that was said and done, Noah opened up a liquor store and got drunk. He had a functional masculinity. He had a functional masculinity shortfall. Uh, Abram, before he became Abraham, was told that his 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 offspring was gonna be like the like the stars of the sky, the sands of the beach, the, the sand grains of the beach. But he went into his hand serving because he thought that that he thought he was gonna get an heir through his hand serving because his wife was barren. He had a functional masculinity shortfall. Now the offspring of that situation been fighting each other. Ooh, been fighting each other since that happened. And 
I'm going to get to that in just a minute. That, that's a good thing that I mentioned that real quick. And David, well, David was a man after God's own heart, but he liked he liked women a little bit too much. Not as much as his son Solomon, who was wise beyond practically any man that came before him, but he loved women way too much. He lo David loved women a little bit. Solomon loved women a lot of bit. Functional masculinity shortfalls, and which is ironic because most of the time our functional masculinity tough decision shortfalls actually come in matters like that. Oh, what's up coming? Break real quick. Praise be to a God that does not condemn and that seeks in his default setting to love and to redeem. To those who are repenting for their shortcomings. Because Abram was restored. David was restored. Solomon was kind of restored. But he was, he got back to his restoration moment. Jesus didn't need to repent. Because there was no sin in him. And yet he's going to still make this decision. He's going to still go and make this decision. Was no functional masculinity shortfall in Jesus. So, let me go back to the Abram piece. Men, when we fail to make tough decisions, we set bad precedents toward all women. We set bad precedents toward our children. We set bad precedents toward our friends, toward the young younger men that we disciple bad precedence to the people in our workplace and i'm not saying that a woman making a bad decision has no consequences but first corinthians 11 verse 3 say what it say for a reason the man is supposed to be the covering over a woman the man makes a terrible functional masculinity shortfall decision the decision in the wrong direction that has reverberations for the woman's security. It has reverberations for any daughters that he has for the example that he's setting for what men are supposed to be like in their lives. Bad examples for the sons who need a model of masculinity to emulate. Now, we already know that we have an absenteeism problem in uh, black America. You have an absenteeism problem, period, because there's a war on masculinity that's particularly bad in black America. So that's a functional masculinity shortfall decision. This dysfunctional masculinity. It's a shortfall. It's a bad decision. Ripple effect. Generational, generational sinning. Generational cursing. Generational dysfunction. And yet, because Jesus did this, he made that conscious decision to go on the cross and died on the cross for our sins and was raised up on the third day. We have, we as men have access to resurrected power when decisions that are so tough, we sitting in there sweating and shook and don't know what to do. Resurrected power to make tough decisions. Resurrected power to rectify bad decisions. I'm just, I'm just thankful. I'm just thankful Jesus made. I'm just thankful Jesus made the decision that he needed to make. The decision that he made since eternity past. And while it was made in eternity past, there is a different symbolism, a different importance, a different significance. That he made this decision in real time. Not my will. But yours be done. Stand in line with the will of God the Father. Is probably the number one thing. Above all else. That we as men. Need to be relied upon. In our decision making context. Period. Matter of fact, that, that, that's the summary right there. Let me say it again, because that's the summary. When it boils down to it, being in the will of God 
operating out of the will of God is the number one thing that all functional masculinity must lean upon when it is relied upon to make good, solid decisions, particularly the tough ones. So men, me included, golly, me included, got to understand. We got to understand. We got to understand. There is a lot riding on the decisions that we make. And if we're not making them in this context, we messing up. Men, we got to stop messing up. We got to stop messing up. All right. Got a little preach on y'all real quick. Told y'all I was going to meddle a little bit. We done, though. Uh, bet your food coma gone now. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll be back uh, in a couple weeks with the next part. Don't take it personal. We're going to do a lot of meddling in that one. And I'm going to be meddling with myself, too, so don't get it flipped. Uh, we can encourage me to be posted at its normal time. Uh, and as always, folks, always men, I say these things and teach these things because I love y'all. And I understand what I understand what it's like to be a man trying to operate out of God-like stuff. So I'm trying to help y'all. I'm trying to help me. So, love y'all. Nothing y'all can do about it. God bless you. Take care of yourselves. Take care of what God has commissioned you to take care of. And have a great Thanksgiving weekend, folks.